Systems thinking is a new way of looking at the world. It's a way of understanding our assumptions about and responses to the society we live in. These are our mental models based on our past experiences, beliefs and values. Systems thinking adds an important new dimension to our thinking. The traditional way of thinking in our culture is not systems thinking. It is analysis. We are all familiar with this way of thinking. When we use analysis as our dominant mode of thinking, we break down complex ideas into smaller parts. Once we understand each of the parts, we then describe the whole as a combination of those parts. Using analysis is a great approach for simple problems and contexts. Using a toaster or kettle, for example. Sending a text or email. But some more complex problems and contexts involve systems, and we need to understand the systems in which they exist. According to Meadows, a system is a set of parts interconnected in such a way that they produce their own pattern of behaviour over time. Systems therefore have three components, elements, interconnections, and a purpose. All the parts play a specific role, but depend on the other parts to achieve their purpose. They are interdependent. When they all work together, something new is created, a system that is more than the combination of its parts. Cells, for example, make up an organism. Workers make up an organisation. 11 people make up a soccer team. A group of nations makes up the international political system. A university is also an example of a system, with faculties, students, academics and professional staff cooperating to deliver a service. The internet is a great example of a complex system. It's not just your smartphone and your computer, it's about webs of interconnections all over the world. So what does it mean to use systems thinking? When we use systems thinking, we see the whole as more than the sum of its parts. We try to understand the context and the interrelations between all of the parts and then base our actions on the entire system rather than just one small part. We look for patterns in events and then identify the underlying causes of those patterns. Patterns are important as they tell us that something is happening over and over again in the system. We can then anticipate this pattern recurring in the system and react when it happens again. With systems thinking, we deconstruct the hierarchy of the system to understand the role that each part plays. We map out the system to understand all the stakeholders and complexities. Once we have an understanding of the system, we can design processes to create positive change. Let's think of some simple examples of systems thinking. Imagine you are shopping for a shirt. If you're using simple analysis, you would work out how much money you had to spend, the kind of shirt you wanted, and the right size and colour. But if you use systems thinking, you would consider the relationship of the shirt you are buying to the rest of the clothes in your wardrobe. Will I be able to wear this shirt to work and on the weekends? Will this shirt go with the pants I already own? You could also think about how your shirts generally compare to those of your friends or colleagues, and perhaps try to find a shirt that will fit in with them or stand out. You might think about the shirt balancing out or complementing your existing wardrobe, not just matching or coordinating, but maybe if you already own 16 pattern shirts and only one solid colour, you don't need another pattern. You can see here that systems thinking gives a holistic picture of the context you are facing. Let's think of another example of systems thinking. The state government is trying to reduce the rate of reoffending in young men. They consider the problem and decide to increase the prison sentences to deter the men from committing crimes after they have left jail. If they had used systems thinking, they would have looked at the whole picture. The young men were reoffending because they couldn't get jobs once they had left jail. Because they couldn't get jobs, they couldn't find homes to rent. Because they were unemployed and homeless, they found it hard to form friendships and relationships. They felt disrespected. They acted out because they were completely alienated from the social system. It is much more complex than just imposing a greater punishment. If we use systems thinking to address this complex problem, 
Organisations can offer return to work support, boarding house accommodation and support for ex-offenders. Offering support at this critical leverage point can reverse the direction of the system. Some problems are so complex that we need to use systems thinking just so we can understand them. Problems like social inequality, homelessness, poverty, addiction, obesity, domestic violence, terrorism, and conflict. We can't just analyze them or figure them out. Now let's think about how systems thinking can help us understand another complex social problem, drug addiction. We will take three cases of three different people, Anna, Beth, and Claudia. Anna, Beth, and Claudia are all the same age. They are all Australian women born in Sydney, New South Wales. All of them use illegal drugs on a regular basis. Even though they have the same general characteristics, they all have very different lives because of the systems they are a part of. Anna was born into a very affluent family. She was given every opportunity to be healthy and thrive. Her friends mostly came from the same backgrounds, so this idea of affluence and strong social support was reinforced in Anna's life. Anna always had the best access to healthcare and education, so any challenges she had with dyslexia and poor eyesight were quickly addressed and did not cause any problems for her future. She had braces and additional tutoring. She played team sports and learnt the piano. As a teenager, Anna developed symptoms of depression and anxiety. However, her family did not listen to her and told her she would get over it. We can see gaps in the system here in relation to Anna's psychological and emotional support. When Anna left university, she started her own business, which was subsidised by her parents. She met a man while travelling overseas and married him. He too comes from family wealth. Now Anna and her husband use illegal drugs once or twice a week when they are out with their friends. When Anna is not using drugs, she admits to feeling more depressed and anxious than usual. We can see that Anna's social system is extremely robust, with few gaps and extremely strong supports. However, her emotional system is in turmoil and she lacks support for this. As her life is glamorous on the outside, she feels too guilty to seek help for her mental health. She self-medicates with drugs and alcohol. If or when Anna loses control of her drug abuse, she would potentially have the social supports to strengthen her emotional system. Beth was also born in Sydney to a loving family. Her parents had migrated to Australia before Beth was born. They didn't have a lot of money, but she and her brother and sister were very well cared for. Beth was educated at the local public school and high school. She performed well at school, but then became friendly with some people outside her school who introduced her to drugs. Initially, she started using gateway drugs, but then after she left school, she tried heroin and became addicted. She always thought she would be able to stop using drugs. Eventually, she could not support her habit and one day stole money in order to buy heroin. After being arrested for a series of petty crimes, Beth was in court again facing jail. At this point, Beth qualified for a rehabilitation program and completed this program instead of going to jail. Beth was fully rehabilitated and now works for a human services company which is dedicated to reducing reoffending. We can see here that at one critical point, the social system supported Beth and she was able to get back on track. There were some gaps in Beth's system, but ultimately she was supported by the services offered by the justice system. Claudia was also born in Sydney, but to two unemployed parents, both of whom were drug addicts. Though Claudia was given support by her grandparents to attend primary school and have everything she needed, she started using drugs in her early teenage years. Claudia had children of her own who were taken from her by the New South Wales government as she was unable to care for them. Claudia is now in and out of jail as she commits crimes to support her drug habit. She didn't have finances to have access to medical or psychological help, she never made it to university, and she didn't have the support around her to be offered a rehabilitation program instead of jail. There were gaps at every level of the systems in Claudia's life. Claudia needs all of the social supports in the system that are available. When we apply systems thinking, we understand that we all have mental models based on our past experiences, beliefs and values, and these mental models determine our responses to life. When we think at a systems level, 
we stop individualising problems and victim blaming. We realise that individuals are not entirely responsible for their circumstances and we see the systems around them as playing an important role. So how does systems thinking help us address complex social problems? When we use systems thinking, we address underlying causes of problems rather than their symptoms, as in the case of Beth, where she was offered rehabilitation rather than punishment. The underlying cause was the drug habit rather than the crime, which was a symptom. We identify where the system is strong and where it is weak. We can then work on the areas of weakness and fill in the gaps, as in Anna's case, where she actually needs emotional intervention even though the rest of her system surrounding her is strong. We design solutions based on patterns within the system, as in Claudia's case, where we can intervene earlier in the lives of disadvantaged children to avoid the negative outcomes for them later in life. And we probe the system with trial and error programs. We start with one community and then implement the program elsewhere if it is successful. So, to recap, we need to understand the context and interrelations between all of the parts in the system and then base our actions on the entire system rather than just one small part. This allows us to look at complex problems in new and often revolutionary ways.